With there being a few higher-end Intel Alchemist-based graphics cards built around the same cutdown chip, you've got technically different performance targets and different prices to accommodate that. Enter the A750 and A770, both of which are ARC 7-tier cards, analogous to the Core i7 tier of CPUs. They provide performance that's actually surprisingly close to each other, but they are priced significantly differently, placing the A750 more in the RTX 3050's price segment, and the A770 coming in more around the RTX 3060 and 4060 tier. Which card is worth considering though? And more specifically, is the extra performance in the A770 worth paying for? Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Additionally, don't forget to leave a comment, especially if there's something I missed. I can't cover every aspect of the A750 and A770 over the course of a single video, but I figured discussing the performance of the Alchemist cards would be a pretty good way to justify my arguments for or against the A750 or A770. Without anything else to say, Let's dive into the ARC 7 line of cards, and see which one is worth checking out. To test the cards discussed in this video, let's throw them into my personal system, a gaming-focused machine that can also do some productivity work without issue. With an i5-13600K at the heart of this build, the 6P cores clocked to 5.5GHz can run games, with the 8E cores playing as backup to take OS and background tasks off the P cores. To keep the CPU and GPU fed with data, We've also got 64 gigs of 3600 mega transfer per second DDR4, and a 1 terabyte Western Digital Black SN770, both of which will allow for assets to be streamed in quickly and then cached for use in game. Additional specs will be in the description in case you want to replicate this build or tests. With the test specs out of the way, let's dive into the performance. When it comes to the performance levels of these two cards, the A750 is by and large the weaker card by anywhere from 5 to 15% when referencing from the A770. In Apex Legends, for example, the A770 comes in with just under 13% higher frame rates on average at 1080p, a little over 4% higher on average at 1440p, and the gap once again rising to a little over 13.5% in favor of the A770 on average at 4K. The performance gap between these two cards is kind of inconsistent, especially at 1440p, but if you're looking to game at 1080p or 4K on this game on an A770, I'd only pay around 14% more for the card over the A750, simply because that's roughly where it performs. Another example on the opposite end of the spectrum is Counter-Strike 2, another DirectX 11 based title. This time the A770 came in at under 2% ahead of the A750 on average at 1080p, with the 1% lows not improving much either. 1440p brought the average performance uplift on the A770 up to just over 7%, and 4K was a bit better with average performance leaning in favor of the A770 by just over 10.5%. Cyberpunk 2077 was another title where the A770 wasn't that enormous of an uplift at lower resolutions, with 1080p coming in at less than a 5% improvement on average on the more expensive card. 1440p brought things to under 6.5% on average in favor of the A770, and 4K bringing the best improvement with an over 16.5% improvement on average. The performance at 4K probably isn't going to be world changing, but it is nice to know that as you turn the resolution up, the A770 pulls ahead of the A750 a bit more in this particular title. Fortnite also performed sort of strangely, but after retesting three times the results were consistent in terms of rough percentages in favor of one card or another. At 1080p on average, the A770 came ahead of the A750 by just over 1.5%, and the 1% lows actually swinging in favor of the A750. 1440p wasn't much better, with the A750 coming ahead of the A770 by just over 5.5%, and the 1% lows on the A750 coming ahead by over 32%. 4K on average saw the A770 come ahead by just under 9%, and the 1% lows coming in at just under 26% in favor of the A770. Something is kind of strange here, and I think there might be some performance issues with the driver version tested and a new Fortnite update. For now, it might be worth disregarding the data as an outlier, but the fact that it's inconsistent like this shows what I was describing in my other videos about these cards. Overwatch 2, despite the fact that both these cards don't come close to what an RTX 4060 can put out, saw one of the strongest performance improvements on the A770 over the A750 at all resolutions tested. 
1080p saw the average performance lean in favor of the a770 by 37.5%, and the 1% lows in the same direction by over 40%. 1440p saw similar improvements on average on the a770, with an over 34% performance improvement on the more expensive card. 4K saw average performance improve by over 27% on the a770, and 1% lows jumping up by a whopping 79%. This just translates to better performance in the worst case scenarios, and really improves frame time stability. Red Dead Redemption 2, a Rage title built on Vulcan in this test, saw another enormous improvement on the A770 over the A750 at all resolutions. With the 1080p average coming in at well over 84% higher on the A770, 1440p also maintains the strong average performance with an over 71% improvement on the 16GB card. 4K saw another strong improvement on average on the A770, with performance improving by over 73.5%. This is one of those games where the cards feel like they deserve to be priced significantly differently, and it just shows how much the extra horsepower under the hood can help to improve your gaming experience when it's utilized properly. Moving into more of a value comparison, Let's take a look at the same benchmarks, but this time divide the average performance by the cost of the cards. This will give us a scalar FPS per dollar value, which can be a good metric to use if you're looking for the most value for your money. The comparisons include the RK750 and A770 obviously, but also the RTX 4060 since that's the lowest end card available from Nvidia's 40 series. A price of $200 was assumed for the A750, $290 for the A770, and $300 for the 4060. Let's dive into this. Starting off strong with Apex Legends, and the A750 overall provides incredible value at all resolutions when compared to both the A770 and the 4060. Coming in with similar value at 1080 and 1440p, this kind of highlights either a strength in the fact that 1440p performance is pretty similar to 1080p performance, or a drawback in the sense that 1080p performance could look significantly better. Either way you look at it, the A750 provides incredible value for this eSport title at all resolutions. And looking back at the raw FPS figures, 194 FPS on average at 1080p is pretty hard to complain about, and the 1% low of 122 also shows that the game remains beyond competitive even if you're going to pick up the cheaper ARC card. Counter-Strike 2 is another very strong showing for the A750 in the value department. With an FPS per dollar metric that's far superior to both the A770 and the 4060, it makes the cheaper art card hard to at least not consider simply because the performance for your money is comparably pretty good compared to the other cards on this list. An average of 246 FPS at 1080p and a 1% low of 150, this game is actually slightly more performant than Apex, painting a picture that this card may not perform the best in its class, but it's still very solid. Cyberpunk 2077 is, once again, a strong showing for the A750 in the value department. Additionally, the A770 pulls ahead of the 4060 in this metric as well at all resolutions. While I will say that you probably won't be playing this game at 4K on any of the cards in this comparison, the 1080 and 1440p raw performance figures really show what these cards are capable of rendering. It's odd because when it comes to the FPS per dollar metric, the Intel cards are offering superior value to the competitors from at least the green team at this point in time. Might be interesting to throw some AMD cards into the mix in the future. Fortnite, an Unreal Engine 5 title, in this case running on DirectX 12, showed another strong performance in the value department on the part of the A750, with the cheaper ARC 7 card pulling ahead of the 4060 at all resolutions by a not insignificant margin, the A770 usually drags behind the similarly priced card from Nvidia. Keep in mind though that the exact numbers in this graph will change from region to region, as pricing adjusts depending on where you are in the world. However, I found that generally the value trends stay similar with the prices inflating as a whole on all cards and regions where the Alchemist cards are more expensive. For eSport titles, it seems like the A750 provides pretty strong value in the FPS per dollar comparison. Overwatch 2, another eSport title, this time built on DirectX 11, saw the 4060 absolutely curb stomp the A770 and A750 at 1080p in this metric. At 1440p, the 4060 lost a lot of its performance, but overall it still came ahead of the Intel cards by a decent but small margin. 4K saw the Intel cards pull ahead significantly, probably thanks to the much wider memory controllers. If you're wanting to get into Overwatch in 2024, 
then the 4060 provides the best value on average on lower resolutions, with the A750 pulling ahead once the resolution jumps up to 4K. Warzone 2 kind of bucks the established trend and shows another very strong performance for the RTX 4060 at lower resolutions. At 1080p specifically, the 4060 pulls ahead significantly in terms of average FPS per dollar, and this continues with 1440p. 4K saw the 4060 start to struggle, which makes sense as that card isn't really meant to push resolutions that high, and the A750 actually pulled ahead of both the 4060 and A770 by a decent margin. Would I pick up an A750 or an A770 if I wanted to get into competitive Warzone? Probably not, but the fact that the card pulls ahead in this particular metric at 4K shows how the cards are more beefy than what Nvidia offers for the same price. And finally, Red Dead Redemption 2 saw the A770 pull ahead quite significantly when compared to the A750, and especially the 4060. This title really seems to scale well on Intel graphics architectures in general, and the FPS per dollar metric really highlights how much better the more expensive A770 can be when utilized to the fullest. The A750 saw good performance per dollar as well once the resolution jumped up to 1440p and 4K, but at 1080p it lost by a hair to the 4060. Overall, Intel ARC cards have a very strong showing in Red Dead 2, but the A770 was the clear winner in this value-focused metric. So it's nice to know the specific performance and a rough value metric, but which card, the A750 or A770, is worth putting your interest in? Well, if you're looking for the most horsepower for your money, then the A750 has an established trend in which it pulls ahead of the A770 in quite a few titles. However, there are also a few more demanding AAA titles where the A770 comes out ahead by a very noticeable margin in both raw performance and FPS per dollar. I still think that the A750 is the most compelling card in the Alchemist lineup if you're looking to strictly game, though it's generally not the card that provides the highest frame rates. That honor generally goes to the 4060 at lower resolutions and the A770 once you turn things up to 4K. But if you're looking for strictly the most FPS for your hard-earned dollars, then the A750 provides a very compelling argument for itself. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you guys think about the A750 and A770. Do they meet your performance expectations, or would you rather get something more powerful for a similar price? Also, let me know if you want to see a wider comparison of GPUs included in the frames per dollar comparison charts. That's all I really have to say on the matter, so thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.